Hello, folks. Today is Friday, March 11th, 2021. No, it's 2022. As you, wow. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. It's a busy week, a lot to talk about. Let's dive in. Uh, just so you know, uh, not looking for sympathy or anything, but like if I'm being weird or I'm a little off my game, I'm recovering from a minor surgery, I'm fine, no big deal. Uh, but if anyone's like, why is Jake being extra weird today? That's what it is. With that out of the way, let's talk about the first story involving Elden Ring, the hottest video game that has been sweeping the nation, or really the world. So in an interview with Famitsu, uh, lead behind From Software and the Soulsborne games, uh, Hidetake Miyazaki went on record with a little bit of advice to newcomers because uh, with Elden Ring having massive popularity, a lot of people are playing a From Software style Souls game for the first time. So Famitsu was like, what's your advice for first time players? And Hidetake Miyazaki said, Said, basically to relax, which is kind of nice. Uh, so basically he said to embrace death and the concept of trial and error and the repeating to figure things out and get better. That's really the name of the game here. This is not new for people who, you know, aren't new to these games, but I do like that his response is a little bit more nuanced than just get good. Like he talks about relaxing, enjoying yourself and trying to embrace and learn the game. He also detailed uh, once again, like he has in the past, uh, the fact that this is a little bit more accessible than previous games. It's certainly not the easiest by any means, uh, but just the way some of its open world design works out, you have a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more freedom to really explore and learn the game at your own pace. Separately, Miyazaki did also confirm that Elden Ring is going to shape their games going forward. Uh, there is going to be influence for more of their games. If you pay attention to their previous titles, uh, you see that. You can see one influencing the other all in certain little ways. Uh, and I think that's good because if anything, I really actually like the open world for Elden Ring. So for that to maybe be a continuing through line for their next games, cool. Also though, holy shit, Good luck making another one because Elden Ring's world is massive. It is also worth pointing out with Miyazaki acknowledging new players, noobs, if you will. Uh, a lot of that comes from the fact that this game is like a smash hit, like an absolute blockbuster. So the NPD sales report results just dropped and Elden Ring is at the top of the charts by a significant amount. So the Dark Souls and From Software games have sold very well in the past, but now at this point, they can no longer be considered this little hardcore thing. They are out there in full force. And I think for this one, a lot of it is the hype and excitement on social media, the, the FOMO, if you will, uh, as well as the hype leading up, the people just hyping up Elden Ring trailers and where's Elden Ring, where's Elden Ring. I also see a lot of people on social media getting excited, jumping into this game and getting crushed by that first boss or that first sub boss. A lot of people are like really thrown off by it, but it's also been nice to see people overcome and figure it out and learn. And I think even if you don't like From Software games, we can all just say, hooray video games, right? That's the whole point of this show. Let's move on. The other big thing this week was Sony's state of play. This was like a 20 minute state of play. Uh, they tried to set expectations and saying, hey, it's gonna be mostly focused on Japanese developers and some smaller updates. And that's essentially what it was. A lot of people were hoping for the announcement of Silent Hill or some crazy thing. And we have talked in the past about rumors like Sly Cooper making a return and stuff like that. I always say take that stuff with a grain of salt because you should set your expectations going in for any announcements really. But we got a couple of things that are worth highlighting. I'm gonna link the whole thing in the description down below, but the main highlights are really, uh, we're getting a new demo, it's out now for Final Fantasy Origin, Stranger of Paradise. We also got our first gameplay look at Gundam Evolution, which is essentially Overwatch, but with Gundam. And that's kind of cool, but also weird. It's first person, so you can't see your cool robots, but hey, I'll give it a shot. Hey, next up, this episode is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Vessi. Now, if you haven't heard about these shoes by now, pay attention, listen up. Uh, these are legit and we've been about these sneakers for a while now. They're really good for any person in any situation because they are comfortable, but uh, more importantly, they're 100% waterproof, which is perfect for this time of year. Now, whether you're feeling the last few surprise snowstorms of the winter or uh, just the rainy spring season, uh, these things got you covered, they don't quit. They're resilient because they're made using Dymatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter, but always dry. And it never feels like you're wearing something waterproof. Uh, they're lightweight 
and breathable. Uh, they're also sustainably made and they come in a pretty big variety of sizes. Now, I've already talked about how I like to wear them in my backyard, but more recently I've realized that they're just great gifts to give people that you truly love. Like I said, they're legit, they're comfy, they're lightweight, they're waterproof, and they're my go-to shoes by my door. So if you wanna check them out and get your own pair of Vessies, click the link in the description down below or go to Vessi.com. And as always, big thanks to Vessi for sponsoring our videos. Something that I was excited to see was the TMNT Cowabunga collection. Uh, this essentially is a collection of a bunch of retro Ninja Turtles games. A uh, lot of winners, a lot of losers in there, but all pretty awesome and nostalgic. This collection is launching this year, and I believe it's 40 bucks, so that's, that's a win, especially if you're a turtle head like me. Turtle head? Is that what you call Ninja Turtle fans? Turtle club? Am I in a turtle club? I also want to highlight Gigabash, which is like a multiplayer kaiju monster battler. That's up my alley. I like destroy all monsters and stuff like that. So another trailer to Trek to Yomi, which I should have put this on my 2022 most anticipated list because this, this looks sick. And this just reminded me of that. And we're getting a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game. It's a fighting game and it looks absolutely nuts. It's coming out this fall. The Dio Field Chronicle was also announced for PS5 and PS5. PS4. Returnal is getting co-op, which is pretty sick. I think that game definitely could use something cool like that. A lot of people need to be carried through that game, so there you go. Also, we got Valkyrie Elysium. This is coming to PS4 and PS5 in 2022. We got some gameplay and stuff. It might not seem like much for you, but if you're a fan of the Valkyrie series, it's really nice that those games are having a comeback. But last but not least, can we talk about Exo Primal? My God. So, ugh. so this is a Capcom game. And the trailer starts playing out and there's dinosaurs and then there's a woman in black in tactical gear with red hair, short red hair, Dino Crisis, right? That's what I was thinking. I was freaking out, but also looking at this trailer and it's very much like I was like, oh, they're going, they're continuing after Dino Crisis 3 and they're going full just dumb sci-fi anime, huh? Oh boy, this is not the Dino Crisis I wanted. And then the title popped up, Exo Primal. Turns out it's not even a Dino Crisis game. But what? <laughs> what are they doing? I don't know if that was a troll. I don't know if there's more to the story of this game. <laughs> I don't know. I just, what a, what a roller coaster of emotions I went through watching that. Next up in some updates, the original Dying Light is being updated still. Uh, I've always talked about how these games just continue to get support and it's good to see. And I'm hoping that the same continues for Dying Light 2, but the original Dying Light is now going to be more playable on the next generation consoles. It's also getting an update on the previous gen consoles, like the pro versions of it. So that's good for both PlayStation and Xbox. And along with that, WWE 2K22 is releasing this week. Uh, we linked the trailer uh, and word on the street is it's good that they took a year off and that this game is pretty great. We're jumping into it. We'll have a quick before you buy out soon some information for you but there you have it and in an interesting news some of you guys on social media asked me to talk about this uh, elite dangerous has some pretty significant updates so the odyssey update the, the huge expansion launched on pc it's had some issues it's needed some things uh, worked out and along with that the developers behind elite dangerous have announced that they are ceasing development on the console versions of the game other than like critical crucial updates they're not working on it anymore, meaning it's not going to get that new expansion. And that's unfortunate. It seems like a lot of console players are feeling pretty burned on that. The developers say that they still just want to take their resources and make Elite Dangerous on PC to be the best thing it could ever be. And I will say Elite Dangerous on PC is a pretty incredible thing when you boil it down, but I guess it's a result of it being a smaller developer. It's a shame, like if you're going to commit to putting a game on a console, maybe really try and commit, but unfortunately, it seems like they just couldn't do that here. Oh, and also in Steam Deck news, you may have seen uh, Steam Deck is now going to be capable of running Windows. It was already a thing, uh, but Valve has just pretty quickly updated this thing with drivers uh, supporting a lot of Windows aspects. So there's a thing. There's obviously a lot more to it. It's not as cool and easy as it sounds. I'll link the whole thing in the description down below if you're interested, if you're a weird Steam Deck nerd like me. We're gonna have a video on the Steam Deck next week, and I'm so excited. Also, just wanna link some cool things in the description down below. The first, hey, have you ever wanted to watch a three and a half hour long YouTube video about Deus Ex? I certainly have, and this video from H Bomber Guy totally freaking delivers. Here, he is at the top of his craft, uh, he understands these types of immersive sims better than anyone, clearly from this video. It's just a great breakdown of Deus Ex Human Revolution and a lot of things around it. It goes places and I highly recommend watching it. I'm only about three quarters of the way through it still, but yes, 
go. Along with that, I wanted to share this. Uh, this is from Voyager's Revenge, friend of the show. Uh, this is a Sifu presentation, Batman style, uh, specifically the Batman uh, with the skin, uh, but it's edited with the music and stylized to really be something that you watch, not just essentially a gameplay video of a Batman mod. Uh, this is super well done. And I gotta say the fighting animations and, and, and the move set really does actually work well with Batman here. And I, I love this. If you wanna check out this stuff, everything I talk about is linked in the description down below. Cause we got some release date updates, baby. It wouldn't be a week without release dates shifting and moving. The first is that Dead Space remake, which I believe today is going to be getting a little bit of developer news, but uh, the insider report right now are suggesting that this game was originally intended for the end of 2022 but now it is going to be 2023 so you're going to be waiting a bit also we didn't talk about it in the state of play thing but forspoken has now been pushed from releasing pretty recently to now october 11th 2022 that game seems like it needs more time in the oven i will say the trailer at the state of play was like the first trailer that really i was like oh okay this seems kind of cool but there's still a lot of questions about that one, so I'm glad that they're taking their time on it. Also, Gotham Knights now officially has a release date. It is October 25th, 2022. And from what I've seen, the developers actually seem pretty confident of this release date. Granted, they move all the time, but hopefully that's when we finally see this one. If anything, I could just keep talking about Batman. I've talked about Batman a lot in this video and I can keep going, but I need to stop because we are on a time limit. And as a follow-up to last week, uh, we talked about how the game industry has kind of been rallying around uh, the, the crisis in Ukraine and everything going on. I talked about how there was a bundle in the works to support charities and uh, now it's out. And I wanted to link that in the description down below. For like 10 bucks, you can get access to a bundle of like seemingly hundreds of indie games all different genres. And that money goes to support efforts towards helping people, Ukrainian citizens. And like I said last week, the power of gaming, like they've already raised, they've already crossed their goal. They've raised $4 million for efforts. This is insane charity. The gaming industry and just people who play video games like really are freaking unstoppable. Between this and various streamers raising money and YouTubers, it's incredible. So go check that out, support what you can, and be safe out there. We gotta go. Uh, so that's a that's a Friday show. Really, I was gonna say that's a before you buy. You know how that goes. But I'm I'm like I'm broken. Let us know what you think about everything going on this week. Let us know what you think of the state of play. Were you expecting a Jack and Daxter four announcement and you didn't get it? And now you're never gonna you're gonna throw your PlayStation in the trash. That's what people write in comments, and I think that's crazy. But still, with your expectations, you know, were you happy with some of the JRPG stuff announced? Have you gotten your hands on a Steam Deck? Are you looking forward to that? If you did get one, have you been messing with it? Are you putting windows on it? Are you crazy? Let's talk. Let's talk about all that stuff. Oh, especially also your favorite retro Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. I'd love to hear that. There's an obvious answer, but I'm not gonna spell it out for you. Uh, let's talk about anything down in the comments. We wanna hear from you, of course. Uh, also, the pinned comment where you drop what you're currently playing. Please definitely consider leaving what you're currently playing for our research purposes. But we'll be down in the comments as much as possible, but things get a little crazy. So if you wanna yell at me directly, of course, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino. But if you like this show, you like getting informed, you like hanging out with your old Uncle Grandpa Jake, <laughs> clicking the like button's all you gotta do. We really appreciate it. But thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Have fun, be safe. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Pizza's on me.